Hi, I'm Donna Flynn. I want to talk to you about my experience being stalked and harassed. I'm going to list eight characteristics and six things to keep in mind if this is happening to you. My hope is that by sharing my story, I will help someone. Together, I believe we can put an end to bullying. Here's my story. It seems simple. Ben, and I've changed his name, had wanted to rent a music rehearsal space for a long time. Like any musician, he wanted to sharpen his skills. But at $400 a month, that seemed like a luxury he wasn't willing to indulge in and decided against it. One day while we were talking, he told me he had wondered if he would be good at teaching drums. He had performed hundreds of times, but teaching, well, that was something different. No problem, we decided that I would be the perfect guinea pig, his first ever drum student. He gave me my first drum lesson while we were sitting on my balcony using our thighs as drums. Ben also wanted to form another band so he could play more. He already had a guitar player in mind. We went out to hear him one night and it seemed like a good fit. With all that, he changed his no to a yes and began renting the drum room. Everything was going great. Through the local music scene, Ben knew of a woman who was getting free drum lessons, but wasn't happy with them. He thought about offering her free lessons as another trial student, but he was leery about her because he said he didn't really know her, describing her as being ditzy. So he kept thinking of who else he could ask, but finding someone who has the time and interest wasn't easy. Knowing she'd only be getting a few lessons, it seemed harmless. So Ben offered her the lessons. In walks Deborah Hewitt. Other than hello, goodbye stuff at maybe a half dozen local music events and a few exchanges on social media, I didn't know her at all. Even after she began the lessons, we only had one face-to-face -face conversation and much of that was about her former drum teacher who she seemed to despise. What happened? Well, nobody could have predicted it. Within a few weeks of beginning her lessons, Deborah began a constant stream of posting Facebook pictures of her and Ben and posting comments throughout the day about her lessons. She started showing up more and more at the places he went and photo bombed endlessly. In my opinion, it became obsessive. The lessons came to an end for many reasons and I decided to delete her as a social media contact. Frankly, I didn't know her and I didn't want to keep seeing her posts. Simple enough, right? Months after I deleted her, I get a message from her saying, I see you have discontinued our friendship. May I ask why? Is she kidding me? This is a grown woman who would actually contact someone they barely know to find out why they were deleted. I didn't think I owed her any explanation, so I ignored the email. I didn't reply. After about 30, 40 minutes, I got another message from her saying, I see you saw my question and have decided to not answer me, not right away anyhow, and made some comments which I got the impression was to press the issue with me. Okay, I thought she wants to know, so I'll tell her. Very simply, I told her that she was deleted several months ago and that I got tired of watching her profile posts on what I thought was an unhealthy obsession. So I said, I deleted you. I got a response from her that went on for pages and pages. She starts off by berating me and says, quote, I'm dealing with a stalker right now and I understand unhealthy. Then subtle threats begin. She says, to be honest, I can't wait until I run into you and it will happen. Be prepared. She said, I'm not a fighter, but that she's going to tell Ben about this and other people I know, which she did do. She started off by talking to three people about me and weeks later, when one of them blocked her, Deborah began contacting his wife, who she barely knew. She even showed up at one of their workplaces, but was thrown out. When Deborah contacted my friend, he told her to back off. Because he knew me, he and his wife had to withstand harassment, which went on for months, and public scrutiny with her online posts, attacking their character. At one point, she actually tells me to get some help and continues with her subtle threats, saying, I do hope to see you at the jam tonight. We'll prove interesting. Listen, 
She wouldn't even be going to that jam where she has an opportunity to play drums if it wasn't for me helping Ben to follow through on the things he had wanted to do. Her email was filled with insults, profanity, and nonsense, saying things like, you are throwing your weight around. Hmm, I didn't know deleting someone from a social media page is throwing my weight around, but okay. She says, I am so pissed off at you for being such an idiot. Well, there we have it. You are an idiot. She even compared me to other women in the community, telling me that these women would blow me away. I don't compare myself to other women. I celebrate how amazing these women are. Some of what she said is so off base and hostile, I'm not even going to repeat it. Wow, so how do I respond to an email like that? I told her, you wanted a reply, so I gave you one. And I let her know that if I heard from her again, I would report her for stalking and harassment and I told her to leave me alone. But she wouldn't stop. She sends me another message saying, oh, you bet I'll leave you alone. After this, I wouldn't be surprised if everyone left you alone. She sent a clear message that she was going to talk to people. I respond to her message repeating myself, do not contact me again for any reason. And she contacts me again saying, LOL, see you soon, darling. And writes on my social media page right under my contact, telling her to stop stalking and harassing me when I noticed she had written a derogatory comment on one of my posts. Her emails to me that night went on for seven hours before I finally blocked her. I haven't communicated with her in any way since that night. Shortly after the incident, Ben told her not to contact me again, but she ignored him. She continues to harass me by contacting my friends and she's still at it now. Nine months later, I was told by someone that Deborah approached them to tell them about it. She approached me recently too. She followed me into the ladies room at a local restaurant. I didn't realize she was following me in there or even going to be at the restaurant that night. She shouted a few things to me very loudly, including a profanity as I walked down the hallway, not acknowledging her at all. Luckily for me, when this was happening, I heard a lot about Deborah Hewitt that I didn't know before. I found out the two other women had to get restraining orders against her. It actually isn't unusual for her to act this way. As an example, when she was blocked from a public forum page, instead of apologizing for her bad behavior, once again, she took to social media to put down the organizer and speak to the others in the group about it. This left me wondering how someone who is known for doing this kind of thing is able to be associated with groups of people. Why didn't I know about her sooner? Why is this kind of thing kept so quiet? You may not be as lucky to be tipped off about your predator the way I was. When someone is stalking or harassing you, you can't anticipate what will happen or what your reaction to the attacks will be. It's going to be very, very stressful. In fact, when I read about this online, the authorities say the intention is to torment someone to the point of suicide. Imagine carrying that load all by yourself. Imagine being a teenager on the receiving end of intentional attacks to cause so much anxiety that the victim would feel they have no option other than to commit suicide. I think it's time for us to take aggressive steps to end bullying, stalking and harassment by dealing with these bullies particularly for the young people who may not be able to do it for themselves. As an adult, I think it's our responsibility to stop being silent. My way is to expose my predator and tell my story. Your way may be the same or it may be different. You may not be able to expose your predator the way I am. That's okay. I believe if we all do something in our own way, it will add up and together we can make a huge difference. Sociopaths, stalkers, bullies in general have many similar characteristics. Here is what I have learned about sociopaths. They, one, are shallow. A sociopath lacks depth and sincerity. You may feel as if you are speaking to a child when you communicate with them. In my situation, a grown woman was described as ditzy. These behaviors were warning signs that I missed. Two, are compulsive liars and present themselves as victims. 
Sociopaths will say what they need to get what they want. They always have a hard luck story and excuses for why things didn't work out for them. The ultimate drama queen with outrageous problems that they never have evidence to back it up with. They take no personal responsibility. It's always somebody else's fault. In this situation, I heard very positive things about Deborah's former drum teacher, contradicting everything negative she had said. In hindsight, that was a glaring warning sign. Three, are self-focused. They have very little genuine feelings. The impact of their actions is of no interest to a sociopath, no matter what the cost is to the people around them. Four, are the life of the party. A sociopath gets bored easily. They are looking for the action in environments where they can stand out and get noticed. They go where they can get attention. Five, are calculating. Having their basic needs met is what their entire existence rotates around. They seek out people they can use who will help them, give discounts and give things to them. They are looking for weak spots that they can exploit. Six, they think they are superior. They believe they are stars, godlike, better than others. They see others as inferior. They believe their input is not only necessary, but they view themselves as people of influence and authority. They act on things that don't involve them as a way to exercise their authority. Seven, are game players. A sociopath looks for strategies, loopholes, and are cunning to achieve what they want to achieve. They don't tell people the full story. They keep things to themselves, only showing what they want you to see. Eight, are charming. Because a sociopath does not feel the same emotions others feel, they copy what they believe to be normal societal behavior to fit in. They seem fake and awkward to be around, using their sexuality to gain leverage and manipulate. They have deep-rooted anger and resentment, which they hide with a charming exterior. If someone told me their personal story about being stalked and harassed and wanted to know my thoughts, this is what I would tell them. First, you're not to blame. None of it is your fault. You don't have to take any responsibility or apologize for being a victim, ever. Your reaction to their attacks is normal. Whatever you feel or thoughts you have are okay. When someone is intentionally trying to hurt you, the pressure can seem overwhelming. It's all right to offload that with people who care about you. They are strong enough to help you carry the weight. You don't have to carry it all by yourself but be selective with who you share it with. Make sure it's somebody you trust and who respects you. Unfortunately, some people still blame victims. There are people out there who think the victim could have worn a longer skirt, must have flirted to get harassed at the office and blah, blah, blah. These Neanderthals point the finger at you. They won't hesitate to tell you the people who like your predator and attempt to shift the blame off them onto you. No. You are the victim. You have done nothing wrong. Trust that good people will see the predator for whom they really are and will be there to support you for as long as you need. Second, give people time to process the magnitude of everything. You were blindsided when it happened. Your friends and family will be blindsided too. Much of what you experienced may not even be known, making the full scope of what you've been through difficult to grasp. Because of this, you may feel as if some people shrugged it off. Maybe some did, and in those cases, you may need to move on from those friendships, but probably most will not. They likely just need time to figure out how to best help you. I spoke to one of Deborah's victims. She said, lots of people brushed off what I was telling them, thought I was exaggerating. I personally had a very hard time to speak out because I found for months nobody believed me. This is a cycle she goes through, not just me. She meets new groups of friends, jealousy starts, they all walk away and she goes through it again. She is obsessive. She waited outside my apartment all the time and sent massive threatening emails, 
rude emails. One time she called me every 15 minutes for three days straight, no breaks. It's hard for people to digest all of that, so be patient with them. Third, don't feel guilty if you miss the warning signs. You may have felt stresses from your predator long before the attack. This may have caused you to act out of character. Don't worry. People who hold themselves in a higher standard see things clearly and will recognize the truth. They know who you truly are. Take comfort in the wonderful people you have in your life. Fourth, do not participate or interact with your predator in any way. Speak to the police if necessary. Fifth, see your predator for who they really are, not the person who befriended you. Sixth, regain your composure and rebuild. The reason your predator attacked you is because they're jealous of you. They are never going to be who you are. Have what you have or go where you're going. They're not in your league and they know it. The healing process will continue long after the attacks and the people associated with your attacker are long gone. The time and energy you put into dealing with this has been draining. It's likely impacted things in all areas of your life. Do what you need to do to get on solid footing, as long as it's legal, of course, staying focused on you so you can move forward stronger and wiser. Because they are driven by having their basic needs met through a false persona and manipulation, they create a very large circle of acquaintances, satisfying their sense of self-importance. The lack of genuine friendships keep them from getting the professional help they need because when they act out, their blunt reality is that nobody really cares enough about them to get involved. People distance themselves from the situation because they are embarrassed for having a person like that in their life in the first place. No matter how many people they surround themselves with, they are alone. Because they have nobody, they continue on the cycle. For me, I saw a post of a teenager who committed suicide after being bullied. I have seen far too many of those. I had two situations happen. This is just the one I decided to talk about first. When I saw the post about this beautiful young lady taking her life, I knew right then and there that I needed to speak out. It's out of control. When someone or some organization doesn't get what they want, it seems more and more they just add pressure. This is my small way of pushing back and saying no to bullies. I'm going to ask you to do one thing for me. Please like and share this video. By doing so, you may help somebody that you don't even know. You may even help save a young life. I'm Donna. Thanks for listening.